Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and Raylib just turned two. What is Raylib? Well, it is an open source C++ based framework. Uh, pretty much it is an all-in-one package that makes learning to create games using C or C++ about as easy as any option I've ever found out there. And the reason why this is so effective is because it's basically a turnkey solution. What they've done is they've set up a compiler for you, an editor in the form of Notepad++ that's configured to just run their examples, and it ships with 20 or 30 of various examples to get you started and going using C or C++ for game programming. And that's an area that's a lot of challenge for people a lot of times. When you first start off with C or C++, you're just overwhelmed with the things you need to learn. You need to not only learn the programming language and the syntax of the language, and frankly, C, not too bad, C++, it's a complicated beast of a language. So there's a lot to learn from the syntax side of things. But on top of that, you also have to figure out what a linker is, uh, how to do uh, what a compiler is, how the compiler and linker work together. Uh, how to use the include system, the preprocessor, how to link into an external library, which library to actually go ahead and use. So even before you could even draw like a hello world text box on screen, you need to go through a whole lot. And that's where Raylib really shines. Basically, it bundles all the stuff together and makes it very easy for you. And it does it in a very cross-platform manner. Now, I am not going to go into a huge amount of detail on Raylib because actually I already have. So I will link this down below. Um, and you can see my, uh, my logic here is still pretty consistent. I think it is a C++ library that's perfect for beginners. It is very beginner focused. And that's not to say that you couldn't use it in a more sophisticated project, but but this is very turnkey. Like it's one of those things where you kind of open up an editor and there's a bunch of example code ready to go. Press one button, it compiles it and off to the races. All your code can be in one little file. It's very simple and straightforward setup for beginners. And there are an absolute ton of examples that ship with it. You can see right here on the website, we've got various different examples. They've been compiled here for the web, uh, but this is what it goes through. It's even got some VR stuff in there now, uh, but it covers all the basic stuff, sprites, text, uh, colors, graphics, uh, basic input, audio, etc. So it is all the low level stuff you would expect to need to make a basic 2D game. Um, and then now actually some 3D stuff as well, which is pretty cool. They've even added uh, PBR, physically based rendering support to it. And you got some slightly more uh, advanced examples here. Uh, so it is growing in complexity, but it is not growing in difficulty. And that's why I really admire what Raylib's done. This is again, very much focused towards teaching people. And they've done a really good job of it. When you see these examples, a lot of them are like 20, 30 lines of code, very straightforward, very clean code. Well, what I'm talking to you today about is Raylib 2.0 was just released. Now there's not a whole lot here that's just uh, overwhelmingly staggering new features. This is a very incremental uh, product. And so the 2.0 isn't really that special, uh, like 1.9 type thing. So it's not that it was a milestone release, but there is some significant stuff here in the 2.0 release. And one of those is there is no longer external dependencies, make it uh, much easier to compile now. So there's no GLFW or OpenAL um, extension requirements there. So building it just got a lot easier and it makes it so that it works with some um, libraries and technologies a little bit easier going forward. Uh, they also completely redesigned the audio uh, the um, audio module. Now that was one of the dependencies that used to use OpenAL, which is an open audio library. Uh, seems like they've built their own now uh, that works in-house. And again, it takes away one of those external dependencies. Uh, support for continuous improvement building. Uh, it's not gonna be something that most beginners are using, but this is one of those ones that people are going to absolutely love. And one of the most requested features with Raylib, at least when I first got involved with it in 1.6-ish, 1.7, is a Linux version. And that's there now. So basically they now have more platforms supported and tested, including BSD family uh, and Linux based platforms. So you've got pretty much all of them, FreeBSD, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, uh, Debian, etc. Uh, so now it's actually even available in various different package managers. So one of the big checkboxes that people were looking for from Raylib, that Linux support or Unix support is now there. So it's even more cross-platform than it was all along. Now it's highly portable C code. I think it is mostly just a matter that uh, the original developer just didn't work in Linux and that's why it was never spe uh, specifically ported. Uh, support for the TCC compiler, and again, this comes back to the whole um, removal of external dependencies. The TCC is the tiny C compiler. And here you can see open some door to an amazing future, allowing, for example, static linkage of libtcc for runtime compilation of Raylib based code and the library itself if required. Uh, it's also very, very fast. Uh, again, that's not really the most exciting feature ever, but um, this cleanness of the design does lead to some advantages later on. Uh, we got some refactoring into a centralized config H basically um, 
enables you to make a lightweight version of it if you want to compile things down. Uh, part of that new feature is brand new font rendering and packaging system for TTF fonts, SDF font, uh, support, uh, CPU image data manipulation, orthographic 3D camera mode, a complete review of their math library, single header only, um, and some more examples, etc. So if you want to get the full details of the Raylib 2.0, you can see the uh, change log. It's, uh, it's pretty big. Um, but it's a lot of, you know, minor tweaks and fixes. I think by far and away, the feature that people are going to be most excited about here is the Linux support coming in. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff's internal and for consistency and making things run a bit better. But uh, yeah, Linux developers will definitely be happy to see that come in. Also got 64-bit uh, ARM support added. But you can see there was a lot of uh, changes here. There's now a UWP or Universal Windows platform. And then we've got a bunch of uh, small fixtures. Um, bug fixes, et cetera, the kind of stuff you would expect in a particular release. So uh, yeah, that is Raylib 2.0. It's one of those ones, again, I just think it's it, it fits a niche really, really well. It makes it, um, it's the most usable entry-level C game framework, in my opinion. It's so much easier to even just get up and running using uh, Raylib than it is even SDL, SFML, or the like, or Allegro, et cetera. This is about as turnkey as they get. It's a single download. You open up, you run the IDE, you press play and you're off to the races. You want to start a new project, you press this button, you start typing your code and you're good to go. No worrying about that linking and all that other stuff. So if you want to start for some reason, you want to start your game development career using C or C++, I do highly recommend you check out Raylib, uh, available here at raylib.com. Of course, I will have all the appropriate links down below, like always. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.